Good morning and welcome to the daily race. Have you ever had plans fall through and what you ended up doing was was way better? I mean, I, I don't know how many times we've gone out and our plan was to go to a specific restaurant and uh, we've been thinking about it all day and we were excited about going to that restaurant and we get there and the line is like, it's like a line out the door. It, it's, it's a two hour wait and there's no way we're gonna wait there for that long. So we end up going to another little hole in the wall place down the, the road, place we'd never been before and it was amazing. <laughs> we, we discovered this new place to eat and it was incredible. Uh, we've done it on trips, and we were planning on, on seeing these sites on the trips, but something came up, and we weren't able to either go that far or weren't able to, to go to that place, and we, we made a detour, and on that detour, we saw some amazing things. Uh, so often in life, we have plans. Those plans are interrupted, and really cool things come about because of it. We discover new places. We have new experiences, things that we would have... If we had stuck to the plan, we would have never had those, those amazing opportunities. As we look at the story of the Old Testament, the, the New Testament, God's plan for redemption, I want us to be absolutely certain and clear, and so does the author of Hebrews. The story of the redemption of Jesus Christ is not one of those stories. This is not, hey, God had a plan and it didn't work, so let's come up with plan B. Hey, here's the plan. I'm going to give Moses the law and the Israelites are going to follow this and that's how the relationship's going to go. And then it didn't work. So God says, ah, oh, now I'm going to send Jesus. That's not what this story is. The redemption through Jesus Christ has been this plan all along. As we read through the Old Testament and as we're reading here in Hebrews, pointing back to the prophets, pointing back to the law, that these were precursors. Uh, these were shadows of what God was going to do. He was preparing the way for Jesus to come. It says here in Hebrews chapter 8, Here is the main point. We have a high priest who sat down in the place of honor beside the throne of the majestic God in heaven. There he ministers in a heavenly tabernacle, the true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands. Uh, the tabernacle, the temple, those weren't just a a try to fix things, uh, uh, an experiment. No, they were a, a physical picture of the heavenly reality, of the, the throne of God, God's presence. And that was, that what all that it was pointing to was fully complete when Jesus came and gave his life up on the cross. We have this, this first covenant with the priest and the temple and the law, but this seven covenant, uh, covenant isn't, isn't an accidental thing that was stumbled across uh, going back to the drawing board. No, it was planned all along. And that's what the, the author here is wanting to make sure that we understand. He, he points back, and the reason why this is so important is because for, for the Jewish people, they had to know, they had to understand that, that Jesus' coming was the plan. And this wasn't just hey, some new religion. This wasn't just some, some new, you know, turn from your old ways and turn to this. No, this was the completion of what God was doing all along. So he points them back to a passage in Jeremiah. And this is what we're going to read, kind of the whole passage here that's quoted here in Hebrew. It says this, The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. They did not remain faithful to my covenant, so I turned my back on them, says the Lord. But this new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people and they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, you should know the Lord. For everyone from least to greatest will already know me. I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. When God speaks of a new covenant, it says it means he has made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and will soon disappear. It was phase one, phase two. It wasn't, hey, two pathways to God. It's one pathway to God. This one, now that Jesus has come, this, this old one is obsolete. Uh, the, in fact, it's, it's really been completed with the second covenant. What's the second covenant? The agreement between God and man where Jesus is that sacrifice. He is our high priest. He went to the Holy of Holies and gave up his life as a sacrifice for mankind's sin once and for all. I love that last phrase. And I'll forgive their wickedness and I'll never again remember their sins. 
See, we live in a world so often where we have plan A, plan B, plan C, because, well, the best we can do is, is make an educated guess about what the future is going to hold. We should make plans. We should seek God in our plans, but we're not going to get them perfect. But please, as we read the passage like this, we're just reminded of God's character. Don't, don't put those human-like failures, project those onto God. God doesn't have plan A, B, C, D. He has his plan, his story. He, he knows what he's doing. He, he has, he's bringing us back into himself. And he tells us through scripture, he points to this ahead of time. That's why prophecy is so important. He, hundreds of years, sometimes thousands of years before he completes a promise, he lets his people know so that they understand he's not just making this up as they go along. God's redemptive plan has already been written, it's already been laid out, and we can trust him because of that. So if we can trust him for eternity, we can also trust him for today, for your next step, your next decision, your next uh, opportunity. And as we go along, we seek God's guidance along the way. Not just our plans, but God, what would you have me do in this? Learning to hear his voice, learning to take intentional steps forward, walking with him. Let's pray. God, we come today and we just thank you for um, the fact that, that you have a plan. And God, in our, in our uh, uh, just smallness, in our finite mind, God, we, we, we can't see that far in the future. In fact, just to even think about eternity uh, makes us understand how small we are. But God, we trust you. We trust you and your plans for today and tomorrow and for all eternity. And God, we just want to stay in alignment with you. We, we don't want to be bouncing around all over the place with, with our best guesses. God, help us to lean on your Holy Spirit. God, help us not to get out in front of you, but we certainly don't want to lag behind what you're doing either. Just guide us and lead us today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.